Eh? Why was I muted? Why was my mic muted? There was no reason it should have been muted. On OBS it was fine, but on the mic itself it was muted. I have no idea. I have no idea. Let me try that again, everybody. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Welcome in and happy Tuesday. Welcome in, everybody. Hope y'all are doing fantastic today. Having a good Tuesday. Tuesday. Hello, hello. Um. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Hello, 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 everybody. Holy crap. Ghost, oh my gosh. Adored haunting ghost cheer dex 10. Not even like five minutes in the stream and Ghost is already cheering. Yay! <laughs> Thank you for the 10 bits, Ghost. Thank you so much. And Squid James, congrats on that 30 stream streak as well. Congratulations. I'm cold. It's freezing here. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Grima. Impulse, Dark, Bray Jared, Deck God, uh, Squid James, Mega Rock, Maddie, Grima, Redneck, welcome in. Marsh, welcome in. Ghost, welcome in. Chevy, welcome in as well. DBZ, welcome in as well. Just finished some hamburger pasta. Ooh, yummy. Hamburger pasta, yum. Morning, Metal Spider. Morning. Uh. Yeah, I feel you. Uh, it doesn't get that cold where I live. It's just supposed to be rainy today. It's just supposed to be rainy today. Uh, DBZ. Wow, right off the bat. Thank you for redeeming sing mode. Uh, what would you like for me to sing? Note, it has to be a song that I know. It has to be a song that I know, and I only sing a part of it. Sing Shala Head Shala? Uh? I don't know if I know what that is, DBZ. Flaminika! Welcome in as well. Welcome, welcome. The fastest sing mode ever. <laughs> yes. Time to pull on the new banners for Chevreuse and not for Raiden or Yoimiya. Ah, eh, yes. I will probably end up pulling for Chevreuse, not for uh, Raiden or Yoimiya. Uh, definitely, probably not for Raiden. If I get Yoimiya, though, eh, it would it would be okay. It would be okay. Although I have Lenny, so there's really no point. That's a Dragon Ball song. I don't know any Dragon Ball songs. I'm sorry. Could you pick something else? The Tales of Fantasia OP. Oh. Uh, okay. I was not expecting that, but uh, yes, I can do that. Just give me a second here. Yeah, you dream. Yes, I know. Uh, I know the Fantasia opening. Just let me make sure I have the lyrics up, so that I don't. Uh, so I don't mess it up. Um, that's what I always make sure I want to do. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see. Let's see. Let me do uh, the first verse. I'll do the first verse. Because that... I'll do the first verse. That should be uh, long enough, I believe. The first verse in the pre-chorus should be long enough. Let me do that. Uh, hold on. Let me see. Oh, wrong one. Where is the... Ah, there it is. Turn the music off. There we go. All right, let me make sure I'm starting on the right note. Mahiru no tsuke tsuki ga Anata no me wa sarau Zuto mate ta tono toki Mo namida Oaraseru yo akeni Mabute tokeru hizashi Toi asu no kioku Koko ni Mezame no toki Oriru 
見つけてよドリーム壊れかけた時に埋もれたその力に気づいて見つけてよドリームどこへいても聞こえてる思い伝えキスキスキス There we go There we go What a way to start off the morning It's been a while since I've done that one That has been It has been a while But uh Yeah I like that opening a lot Let's dance. <laughs> First sing mode and now a dance break. Oh my gosh. We're just having a, a busy, a busy first morning, uh, a busy morning for the stream so far. Before we even get into the game. Before we even get into the game. We must, uh, we must sing and we must dance apparently. So, uh, let's do it then. Let's do it. Final Fantasy X victory theme in here. Hey. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, DBZ, glad you enjoyed it. Hold on, I need to scroll back up because uh, I missed some stuff in the chat. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Today's pretty good as today is the day of the Spy X Family crossover in Street Fighter 6. Yeah, I saw a trailer for that. <laughs> Despite your forger not actually being playable or a costume for her for Jun Lee, and you know, it's just co costumes for Avatar along with Lloyd too, it's still cool nonetheless. That's awesome. I mean, Lloyd is awesome. I don't have school today because of severe weather and parts of my country are getting flooded. Oh my gosh. Stay safe, Chevy. Please stay safe. Mango! M -m -m mango! Welcome in, Mango. How are you doing today? Hope you are feeling better. Do you, how do you sing in Japanese so well? Practice. Deck God, practice. <laughs> A lot of practice. Overrated in my opinion, but I expect respect those who like it. You're mostly better? That's good, Mango. Got home 45 minutes ago from work. Ah, got it, got it. Especially when Capcom finally learned their lesson about pricing things. They aren't overpriced unlike last time when TMNT costumes came to the game. Ah, I see. Oh my gosh. 7.30 to 13. Oh, uh, 7.30 to 1 shift, but got home around 4, 3, 3. Uh, because bosses are bad here. I see. Reading military time. Military time. Yay. <laughs> yes, I did see that, Chevy. I uh, Stay safe, please. I hope that, um, I hope that things will become safer for you. Oh, I appreciate that, Dark. Military time? It's just 24 hours to us. I don't know. It's, it's always been known to me as a, a military time. Bye! Bye! Well, gotta go. Can't stay long. Got a long drive ahead of me. And uh, I don't get up now. I'm not going to get up at all. Alright, Impulse, no worries. Have a good rest of your day. Be safe on the road and stay sharp! Back by unpopular demand, me. <laughs> Welcome in, Gray Fox. I've only heard it be called that by Americans. Yeah, I I am I am in the U.S. of A. So uh, yes. 
We're like 13 minutes into the stream and we had a song and dance party. Yeah. That's pretty, uh, pretty epic if I do say so myself. But, uh... Professor, it's all gone cuckoo loco! <laughs> <laughs> it's all gone cuckoo loco! <laughs> ah. <laughs> Alright. Well, there's only one thing to do now. We better get this party started, huh? Ba -ba -ba -ba. Hold on. Uh, for some reason, it's letting me uh, swap screens here. Just a sec. Just a sec. Um, there we go. There we go. Now we got it. <laughs> Best redeemed so far. It's all gone cuckoo loco. <laughs> uh, my Luke Triton impression, everybody. <laughs> all right. Okay. Let's do this then. We got a case to finish. Rise from the ashes. Premature celebration at its finest. Still can't believe you haven't seen DBZ before. Yeah. I'm sorry. I did not know that, DBZ. That is pretty cool. According to the Oratrice, I mean Arya. She doesn't have any interest in watching DB, but that's okay. It's not for everyone. Well, it's not that I don't have any interest. It's just I want to go in order. And from what I've been told, the order is really wonky. So it's just eh. I'll have to figure that out in my own time. Because I like going in order. Okay. Without further ado, let's get started, though. The final trial. Final day. February 25th. 9.47 a.m. District Court. Defendant Lobby number two. This is the Defendant Lobby, all right. But there's no Defendant. I've been trying to reach Lana all morning. Where could she be? And where's Emma, for that matter? It almost seems as if... Huh? Something's been happening behind the scenes. Ah! Hi, Edgeworth! Hi, Miles! Edgeworth. Knowing you, you've already figured it out. Who the owner of the 777-7777 ID number is that is? Well, I have a pretty strong hunch. Yeah, I mean, we... Hold on. Messing with the mic height a little bit. Looks like I'm not the only one who's figured it out. Uh-huh. You know, the only reason this trial didn't reach a verdict yesterday. Why was that, Edgeworth? Trying to figure out the chronological order, project, chronological order of the 2R stuff is too confusing. It's back and forth so much. Ah, I see. A hamster laugh for it's all gone cuckoo loco. Both. They all make... It makes me laugh. They both make me laugh. You did. It's because there was still room for doubt regarding this ID record. If that number does belong to whom you suspect, then no doubt will remain. After all, he hasn't been officially charged with anything. True. Not yet. In any event, once all doubt has been removed from that list, I can call for a ruling. Five minutes right. And Chief Prosecutor Skye will be found guilty. But she didn't do it! I figured you'd say as much. That's why I came here, to hear what you have to say. Okay. What's up, Edgeworth? You, this is new for you. This is the first time he's ever done something like this. Lana's hiding something. The only way we'll ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. The truth. Everything goes back to the SL9 incident. Don't be stupid. Today is the last day of the trial. You don't have time to reminisce about the past. That depends on you. If she's found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find out what really happened. Hmm. I'll think about it. See you in court, right? Pure practice, Mango. Pure practice. This is it. 
If I'm ever going to find out what Chief Gant has on her, it's now. All right. Here goes nothing, I guess. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Normally, this is when the prosecution puts forth an opening statement. Hmm? But before that, the police chief has a proposal to make. Chief Gant. Professor, it's all gone cuckoo loco! <laughs> Bad timing for that. Oh, hi, Gant. I mean, at least I got a good laugh in before Gant showed up. Oh, come on, Megarock, that's terrible! Morning, folks. How's everybody doing? Hey, Uji, been back to the pool yet? No, I've been drowning enough as it is in my work. Oh, that's a good one. Don't think I can top that. If you don't mind me asking, Chief, exactly what is this proposal of yours? Sheesh! That awkward silence always gets me! Lana, that is to say the defendant, has asked me if she could speak directly to the court. She wants to do what? Having heard what she intends to say, I feel she should be granted her request. In the end, it should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. Oh boy. Hi, Lana. What's this all about, Defendant? I'd just like to make one simple request and I'll be finished. Well then, what's your request? Your Honor, I'd like you to put an immediate end to this trial. Huh? Uh-oh. Oh boy. I confess to all charges against me. On February 21st of this year, I murdered Detective Bruce Goodman in the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. No, Lana! Thank you for the stretch break. You can't. Your Honor, the defendant's claim does not change the defense's plea. In that case, Mr. Wright, I no longer require your services. But Lana! Your Honor, I hereby forfeit my right to an attorney. The prosecution may lack direct evidence against me. But it has sufficiently proven its case through testimony and circumstantial evidence. I would like you to render your verdict now, if you please. Hmm. Well, the defendant certainly has the right to self-representation. Her request is legally valid, although this is an unprecedented situation. Indeed, it appears there is no need to further continue this trial, even if Mr. Wright may feel otherwise. This can't be happening. It appears the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant. Objection. Oh! Okay, Edgeworth. Edgeworth's objecting here. All right. What's going on? I got out of bed, got dressed, and went my way into my car to drive here, comb my hair back, all this effort to ready myself just for you. No, no, no. No, I refuse this statement. <laughs> yes. One moment, Your Honor. But, Mr. Redgeworth, the prosecution has not yet proven the defendant guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Any ruling at this stage would certainly be premature. Come now, Worthy. I understand this is a difficult time for you, but why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut, hmm? Oh, no, he won't. <laughs> He's helping us. He thought about it, and he helping us. I don't think I care for your tone, Chief Gant. What? Creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes. Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would have me be. Hmm. With this sudden confession from the defendant, it's obvious to me that some kind of deal was struck behind the scenes. Some kind of deal, hmm? Not everyone operates oh, yes, yes. worthy. Oh, come on. Don't throw him under the bus like that. Oh, boy. Way to throw him under the bus. Edgeworth to the rescue. Indeed. Indeed, indeed. Edgeworth is literally uh, preventing 
a disaster from happening at this stage. Because if we don't, uh... If we don't get this trial, uh... Completed? If we end up with a guilty verdict for Lana, Emma won't be able to forgive us. Gant, your smile is slipping something wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder. He's hiding something. Presto Changeo! Good morning! Lord Racer! Welcome in! Welcome, welcome! First time chatting, welcome in! Hi, I am do- uh, pfft, Words are hard. One, two, three. How are you doing? I am doing well, Lord Racer. Thank you for asking. Edgeworth standing up like a boss. Indeed. Like a boss. Hmm. Hmm. I thought so. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to change its first witness. Oh? To whom? As its first witness, the prosecution would like to call Miss Emma Skye. I request the court hears her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, I am exercising my right to self-representation. I don't think we need to continue. I don't care what you think, Miss Skye. Oh! Oh! There we go. Uh, Lord Racer, I have not. <sighs> the exposure of truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, no matter how tragic the truth may be, it will be an even greater tragedy to avert one's eyes from it. That's a good point, Edgeworth. That is a go very good point. Very well. The court shall grant the prosecution's request. That's okay with you, right, Chief Gant? Worthy. You'll live to regret this. Mark my words. Miss Emma Scott, please take the stand. Looks like Edgeworth has decided to take the horse by the reins. Good, good decision there, Edgeworth. Good decision. Now then, witness. Please state your name and occupation. Um... My name is Emma. Emma Sky. My occupation? I'm Lana's little sister, and I want to be a scientific investigator. Two years ago, you encountered the serial killer Joe Dark of the Joe Dark Killings. Is this correct? Yes. I'm trying my hardest to forget about that, though. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I'm going to, ask to have to ask you to recall those events one more time. Mr. Redwood. Please remember, this trial concerns the murder of Detective Goodman. It's an incident that was resolved two years ago really all that relevant. Yes, it most certainly is. Well, well okay then. He surely sure gave in fast. <laughs> the judge is a little bit, uh, lacking in a uh, resolve there, it seems. So you'd think, Ant. Hmm. Yes. Sick burn, indeed. He sure gave in fast. Now, please testify about what happened to you two years ago. The trip to yesteryear has finally begun. It's bound to lead to the truth behind this trial. Oh boy, here goes. Our first testimony. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. A man came running in and took me hostage. Neil Marshall rescued me, but I'll never forget what I saw in that instant. The man raised up his knife and... and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest! Hmm... Judge is kind of brushed off sometimes in trial. Yes, that is true. It's a good thing you weren't harmed. I passed out. I don't remember much. That's understandable. However, please tell me, Mr. Edgeworth, what does this testimony have to do with Detective Goodman's murder? Hmm. That will soon become apparent, Your Honor. You've got to admire him for his courage, considering he has no evidence. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Oh, boy. Here goes nothing. I'll never forget what I saw in that instant, huh? Can you tell us about that? Mr. Marshall jumped on dark. Just then, the lights went out. 
The lights! It was just about this time of year. There was a terrible storm going on, and lightning struck nearby. So the electricity went out? Wait a minute. If it was pitch dark in that room... You shouldn't have been able to see anything, right? Right, but just then, lightning flashed again outside. That sudden flash left an unforgettable image in, of the scene in my mind. I see. I told the detective about what I saw then. The detective? Yes, Detective Goodman. He was in charge of the case. Detective Bruce Goodman, the victim. Hear more. We obviously need to hear more. You spoke with Detective Goodman about this two years ago. Yes, that's what's so scary about this trial. And you told Detective Goodman what you saw. Yes, but at the time, the words just wouldn't come out. That's why I drew a picture. A picture? Yes, I think she mentioned that before. Well, Mr. Wright, have you heard enough? Hmm. No? We're gonna ask more about that picture. This picture of the witness drew. I believe it has a very important meaning. But the list of evidence I was given two years ago didn't contain a picture. Witness, would you mind if we added this statement to your testimony? Yes, Your Honor. Well, luckily we have that picture, huh? Luckily we have that picture on the back of this evidence list that we have. That's the ID list. That's not what we need. We need the evidence list, because if we check on the back of this evidence list... Ta-da! Picture! Picture! Did I miss Victor Von Karma go crazy? Manfred Von Karma? Yes. You missed- you missed Von Karma going crazy. Sorry about that, DBZ. Your evidence is list is like the pockets of a hoarder. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, this little girl put all her heart into that drawing. And yet you would insist on denying its existence? Huh? Hey, I'm not the bad guy. All I'm saying is that as the prosecutor for that case, I wasn't handed such a picture. That may well be, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Behold. This is the evidence list for the SL9 incident. Please turn it over, Your Honor. Turn it over. Turn it... Ah! What's this? There it is. Yes. What is that? Hey! That's it! That's the picture I drew! Ha 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 ha! Indeed. Two men appear to be wrestling here. What's the meaning of this? What are you doing with that list? Me? Only the prosecutor in charge should have access to that list. Huh? These lists. They're... They're different from each other. What? It would appear, Mr. Edgeworth, that the evidence list you were handed two years ago was incomplete. It was. As we confirmed that last time. These two lists fit together to form one. You can see the marks here when they were torn apart from each other. So you see, Mr. Edgeworth, it's quite obvious what happened. Two years ago, only half of the evidence in that case ever reached you. What? What? Ha <laughs> ha Aiden, welcome in! Order! Order! But Miss Sky, why did you draw your picture on the back of such an important list? Because that's what Detective Goodman handed to me in the questioning room, questioning room, Your Honor. Wait a minute. If this list was torn in half... Oh! Hello? It's a raid! Hello? Hello, raiders! Incoming raid from Stara 2 with six viewers. Welcome. Holy cow, hold on. Stara 2! Thank you so much for the raid! Holy crap! Fish Girl is here to steal your snacks! <laughs> Welcome in! Welcome in, Stara! Welcome in! Thank you so much for coming over! Holy crap! Thank you so much for the raid! 
Welcome in everybody, my name is Aria, I am a voiceover artist on YouTube, and I also stream here on Twitch. Thank you so much for coming over and bringing your lovely community over to the guild. Thank you so much. Holy cow. Uh, Stara, welcome in. Uh, blah, 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 blah. what did you, uh, what were you guys playing? What are you guys streaming? How did it go? Five higher raiders. Smarty, I noticed what you did, how dare you? Huh? Oh boy. <laughs> In your handsome face, Sedgeworth. Oh boy. Oh my goodness. Thank you for the bits, Ghost. Thank you for the bits. Welcome in, though, Raiders. Starro, what were you guys streaming? What were you guys streaming? I'm curious. Can we... Hold on. Is, uh, is Grima in chat? Can we do the shout-out? Grima, are you in the chat to do the shout-out? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Potion craft. It was very chill. Oh, nice. That sounds fun. That's the complete opposite of what we are right now, but, uh... <laughs> But, um, uh, that's all right. Thank you for bringing your uh, community over here. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. If, um, any of you need to take a break, get some water, get some food, please do so. Get yourself some, uh, some comfy, a uh, comfy blanket, some food, some water, whatever you need to do. If you need to go take some stretchies, please do that. Do whatever you need to do. But again, Staroff, thank you so much for bringing your, uh, bringing your community over here. Whoa! Why are we panicking? Smart oh my gosh! Idiot 24 joins the guild. Smart idiot! Thank you so much for that follow and welcome to the Shadeslayer Guild. Welcome, welcome! Holy crap, thank you so much. This is, this is so nice. Holy cow. Thank you guys so much. I was building a waifu? What? <laughs> oh boy. If you're hungry, ghost, go get some food, silly. Don't go hungry. <laughs> but again, Stara, thank you so much for that raid. I really appreciate that. Silver Fox, oh my gosh, thank you. S1 of the Fox Live joins the guild. Uh, Silver Fox, thank you so much for that follow and welcome to the Shades Layer Guild. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> oh boy, hold on. Is Grima not in chat right now? Hold on. Let me uh let me uh do a shout out for uh let me do a shout out for uh um Stara here. Uh let me see. Let me do a shout out here. There we go. Uh I don't know why my uh my mod isn't in chat right now, but uh there you go. Uh, here's the here's the shout out for you. Go check them out. Go check them out. Star oh my gosh, Stara! Thank you so much for that follow! Thank you so much! Thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the Shade Slayer Guild! Welcome, welcome! I'll be sure to go follow you back after stream. Modless just like Stara when I lurk. Ah. Hold on, I gotta see what's uh what's going on. I don't know, maybe something happened IRL. Grimon, a coffee break, I guess. That's alright. That's alright, we'll be okay, we'll be okay. We will be A-OK, -okay, I think. Just everyone behave so I don't have to use, uh, use owner privileges. <laughs> but yes, thank you so much for coming in, Stara. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that raid. If you're going to stick around or just lurk, thank you. Uh, I, I appreciate that. If you need to go, though, I completely understand. Thank you so much for coming over, and I hope you have a great rest of your day if you're leaving. Or if you're staying, I hope you enjoy the stream. Thank you so much for coming. Did you see what I said earlier about the Ace Attorney Judge? Huh? No, I did not. I did not. Meanwhile, Nick is just staring intensely. <laughs> yes, uh, Phoenix is just giving us the, um, the stare, like... <laughs> the Gantt stare, the Damon Gantt stare. The order quote. <laughs> uh, no. It's nice to meet a fellow VA too. Wait, you're a VA? Hold it! Hold it! I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know you were a VA. Hold on, I need to. Hey, Hold hey. on. Hey, hey. Hold on. Let me. Let me see. Oh my gosh. Hold on. Hold on. What? I didn't. I didn't know you were a VA. What? Hold on. 
That's insane. Well then, definitely. Definitely. Given that follow. Following you right now. There we go. <laughs> Why was Citrus timed out? Um. Blah, 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 blah. I have no idea. The auto mod must have done that. The auto mod must have done that. I'm sorry. I'm a singer, musician, voice actress. Oh my gosh. Same here. Holy crap. <laughs> wow. This is this this was fate. This was fate, Stara, I think. Stara, I think this was fate. I don't think this was chance at all. It's just that most of my streams don't usually involve VA work. Same! Mine usually don't either. But the streaming is a, a kind of a separation from the VA stuff. But that's awesome! Can you do an Aqua Scream from the Konosuba anime? Uh, I don't know what that sounds like, so I do not. Well, dang! <laughs> oh my gosh, wow. This is seriously fade, it seems. Wow. Holy cow. I'll add to it, Stara. Say so and wholesome as well. <laughs> well, <laughs> I I do. My, um, that is one of my goals here as well to be uh family friendly and wholesome. That is the goal. Objection! Objection! This raid was meant to be. Indeed, the raid was meant to be. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wow, that is insane. But, oh my gosh. Again, I, I've said this like three or four times now, but thank you so much for the raid, Stara. Thank you so much. The strings of fate have strummed their chord, indeed. All right. Let us continue on then, uh, so Nick can stop staring and hopefully he doesn't get dry eye. <laughs> oh my gosh, the prophecy is true. <laughs> If this list was torn in half, then that means... Your Honor. Are you alright, Mr. Wright? Your eyes are bulging from your head. <laughs> I mean, he was staring for so long, maybe that was the reason why. <laughs> if the evidence list was torn in half, then there might be more of the drawing on the back of Mr. Edgeworth's list. <gasps> yes, that's quite conceivable. Mr. Edward, it's possible. Let's see. <laughs> Is something wrong? Do you even have to ask? Sorry, Your Honor. There is indeed something drawn on the back of my list. It's that thing. <laughs> Hello, Blue Badger! <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow! <laughs> That's that... that thing! That thing that was dancing in the evidence room! Clearly, this act of vandalism is the work of a certain chief of detectives. I guess he was out of scrapping. Well, now the evidence list is complete, that's for sure. Very well. Witness, will you please testify about this picture you drew two years ago? Uh, huh? Oh, y yes, sir, your honor. <laughs> Metal pipe! What's wrong with Emma? She seemed to be thinking about something when she was looking at the picture. Hmm. Like she remembered something, huh? Grima, welcome back. That's all right. We yes, we did get raided. We did get raided. I did the shout out though, so no worries, Grima. Oh my gosh. All right, testimony. This is the picture I drew two years ago. The flash of lightning was so bright, all I could see were shadows. After that, I must have fainted. This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. Hmm. Exactly what you saw, huh? It's exactly what you saw, huh? Hmm. Are we sure about that? 
To think a flash of lightning could burn so much touch and image into your mind. Thanks to that, though, she was able to show us exactly what she saw. Ah! Hold on. Well, I don't see any contradictions here. This clearly shows Joe Dark about to murder Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Hmm. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Not really a coffee break. I was heading back home, and probably because of the cold, my phone went to, from 28% to zero in a, fa in a flash. Oh, no! Oh, that's what happened. Oh, gosh. That, that's really strange, Grima. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's look at our evidence, then. There's only one way to look at that for sure. All right. Let's look at the autopsy report. Hmm. Single stab wound. Piercing heart and lung. Assessment. Died from blood loss in under 10 minutes. Weapon found in wound was a missing tip. Hmm. Hmm. Are we sure that's right, Emma? Are we sure that's right? I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this picture the witness drew contains a blatant contradiction. What? But I still remember it like it was yesterday. Mr. Wright, perhaps it would be faster if you simply pointed out this contradiction for us. Uh, of course. What part of this picture contradicts the autopsy report? What contradicts the autopsy report? Well, I would say that the weapon is the reason. I would say that the weapon is the reason. Because if the tip was found in the, uh, in the victim, why would it have a square edge like that? Contradiction, of course, lies here. Take a look at the knife this man is holding. Emma, things are a little off. A little bit. Did you SO? Yes, I did. I did shout out uh, the, our raider. I did. If you look closely, you can see its tip is broken. Even I don't have to look closely to see that, Mr. Wright. But Mr. Wright, look at the evidence. See the murder weapon? Its tip is broken, too. If I recall, the tip of the knife was found broken off in the victim's body. It was the conclusive piece of evidence that proved Joe Dark was the murderer. Well, not quite. I'm afraid it's not so simple, Emma. Objection! And where, pray tell, could you possibly see a problem? It's obvious, really. The victim suffered a single stab wound to the back. If the victim were only stabbed once, then the murder weapon should not yet be broken. Ah! Well, what's the meaning of this? Perhaps the knife was broken beforehand. Sorry, but I'm afraid that's not possible. The tip of the knife was found inside the victim's body. If it was broken beforehand, it couldn't possibly wind up there. That's right. But what does this mean? The tip of the knife was undeniably discovered within the victim's body. The only possible explanation is the witness's memory is mistaken. Hmm. That's why I asked her so many times if she was sure she remembered correctly. I believe you were annoyed at that time. But if I, she was sure she remembered correctly. What? But there's no other way to explain this inconsistency. Is there not? Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. There is another explanation. Have you forgotten already about a little something called falsified evidence? You're treading on thin ice, right? All I'm saying is, is that this broken knife tip might be the piece of evidence that was forged. You can't deny the possibility. No. Ah! Ah ha ha! Forged evidence! Order! 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 Are you saying the investigation really was corrupted? Your Honor, please allow me to once again go over the events that took place the day of the murder. 
The police department and the prosecutor's office were holding a ceremony that day. After receiving the King of Prosecutors Award at the ceremony, Neil Marshall questioned Doe Dark along with Damon Gant. During his questioning, Joe Dark fled the room. Prosecutor Marshall was chased, af chased after him and was killed by Drake. It is my belief that somewhere in this story, there is a lie. Hmm. I... I'm not lying. The man really was holding a broken knife. Hmm. If that's true, then there's no other way around it. This could not have been the actual murder weapon. Oh, there must have been another broken knife. What are the chances of there being two broken knives? Another broken knife besides Joe Dark's. Could there have been one? Hmm. Well, if we're proving Emma right, then of course there was another one. Of course there is another one. Emma can't be lying about this. She saw everything clear as day. Why, Drake? I mean, dark. 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 I can't read. I cannot read, apparently. If the witness is adamant, this adamant about the accuracy of what she saw, it can't just be explained away by a simple observational error. Mr. Wright. In that instant, Emma really did see a broken knife. Ha! I can't read! <laughs> yep, that is exactly it. That was exactly it. I assume, then, that you have some information about this other broken knife. If so, please feel free to enlighten us. The murder weapon was already broken prior to the murder. There's, there's the only one way. Take a look at this. Here's the real murder weapon. Hmm. The real murder weapon? Let's look at the evidence and see if we can find something. Something that could resemble a broken knife. Hmm. 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 Okay, <laughs> I'll stop now, but oh my gosh. It's so obvious as to why Gant removed it now, huh? The answer lies in the past. Two years in the past. Right here inside this picture. This is a picture of the award. Oh, that's Edward speaking. This is a picture of the award ceremony. Ah! ah! What, what is it, Mr. Edward? It's the, the broken murder weapon. Notice the award prosecutor Marshall is holding. Mm? That's... A broken knife! As we earlier concluded, the knife in the drawing was not Joe Dark's knife. That being the case, the knife the witness saw was all in all likelihood from this award. Mm. Order! 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 Neil Marshall was awarded the King of Prosecutors that day. As an award, he was given this broken shield and knife. When he chased after Joe Dark, he pulled out his knife. Being a prosecutor, he did not carry a pistol. This broken knife was the only weapon he had in this dangerous situation. Objection! But that... that can't be. Oh, and why not, Mr. Edgeworth? Because if the King of Prosecutors Award knife was the murder weapon, then the murderer and the victim would be reversed. What do you mean? I mean... This man raising a knife would have been Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Oh. Oh! Oh, boy! But the Prosecutor was the one who actually died. That's true. What's going on here? It seems Mr. Wright has been a bit too eager to jump to conclusions. Hold on. Wait! I, I remember now! I remember everything! Witness? Mr. Edgeworth. What is it? Could you show me your evidence list again, please? His list? The one with that picture scribbled on the back. 
<sighs> I knew it. This picture. I'm the one who drew it. What? You drew it? That's right. The list wasn't torn in half at the time I drew this picture. Oh. Two pieces of a hole, huh? All this time, I've been trying so hard to forget. I must have locked this part deep away deep inside me. Perhaps it would be best if we added this to the witness's testimony. Would you please tell us what you've recalled, Miss Scott? Yes, Your Honor. First the knife mix-up, and now the blue badger? This should be interesting. I don't know if that's the blue badger, Nick. I don't know if that's the blue badger. Hmm. I don't know. Exactly, Megarok. When I saw that man raise his knife, I panicked and rushed toward both of them. I think I... I knocked away the man with the knife. Just then, there was another flash of lightning. And that's when I saw the blue badger. He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw his shadow. His shadow? This is certainly most unusual. Objection. Try impossible. The chief of detectives hadn't even designed him until this year. That would mean he didn't even exist two years ago. Yes, well, the defense may now begin its cross-examination. Stop! Please! Don't pursue this any further! Lana? What are you trying to hide? What are you trying to hide? Lana! What's the meaning of this? Please remain seated in the defendant's chair. But you can't do this! I've already confessed to the crime. Why can't you just leave it at that? Chief Prosecutor Sky. <laughs> We've already come this far. It's too late to turn back. Exactly. It's too late to turn back now. Silence! The defense will now begin its cross-examination. Bailiff, please detain the defendant. It seems we're finally getting to the core of the matter. Hmm. The blue badger, huh? What could she have seen that could be like the blue badger? Hmm. Oh yeah, I remember this. Hold on. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, Glitch. If you turn it around, like so. Nope, not like that. What are you doing? What doing? We're about to present evidence. That's what we are about to do. Um, um. We are about to present evidence. So what she saw wasn't the blue badger, but it was this jar. Hmm. Care to share something with the class? Maybe. Something that might have happened that Lana can't let the court hear about Emma. Hmm. Hmm. The mysterious blue badger was in fact this. But that's... Uh, what exactly is that? I believe it's some sort of jaw. But Mr. Wright! That doesn't look anything like the blue badger. Indeed it doesn't. As it stands now, it's just a plain jar. However, what if we were to change our viewpoint? Our viewpoint? I've got to show them the correct angle to look at this from. Hmm. Now we just got to turn it around. Turn it around. And the this music is so annoying. Uh, there we go. What do you think, Your Honor? This isn't right. I've got to make it look more like the badger. Allow me to remind the defense its case hinges on the witness's drawing. If Mr. Wright can't match the shape the witness drew, we cannot accept his claim. 
I've got to find just the right angle. Maybe I should rotate it vertically a bit more, or horizontally? Come on, Mr. Wright, you can do it! I've got to show them the correct angle of it this from. Hmm. I don't think that was right. Hmm. Gotta turn it around a bit. Gotta turn it around a bit, huh? Turn it around! Turn it around! Turn it around! This could, at least we don't get penalized for this, I don't think. At least I hope not. I hope we don't get penalized for making a mistake like this. I hate this music. Me too! I, I, uh... I hate it too, don't worry. It's so finicky. Bum, bum, bum. Hmm. Why is this so hard? Hey, uh, how up? Oh, nope. Nope, no, no, no. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Go back. Let me, uh... Hmm, I get the feeling it's supposed to calm the atmosphere a bit, but it's more annoying than anything. Indeed. That is exactly what it is. Oh, come on! How is that not right? How is that not right? Because you're trying to make the base look like a badger. Ah! For crying out loud! It's a freaking jar! Come on! It sounds like baby music? Uh. What if we made it look like the hat of the badger? Uh, that's what I'm trying to do here. Oh, do we need to turn it like completely upside down then? Hold on. How about like that? No, that's not right either! The broken uh, handle does add a squarish shape to it. That is fair. Stonewall! Also, welcome in, Stonewall. The squarish handle does add that shape to it. That is true. Hmm. How about this way, then? Without the handle. Does that make any difference? No, that's not it either! Not tilted enough. Ugh, hold on. Ay -ay 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 -ay. Okay, hold on. Okay, um... Bum, 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 bum. This music is gonna get so annoying very fast. I need to figure this out. Okay, turn this, this, no, no. Hmm. Let's point it, uh... This way. Oh! There we go. Hold on. I think we get it now. How about like this? What? No! Have to make three circles. What? Hold on. What? I've got to... Oh, shoot. I didn't mean to do that. No, no, no. I pressed the button. I'm close! I'm really close! I know what we need to do. It's not like I'm... Sh You're definitely close. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is more obnoxious than I remember it being. I agree. Is it like this? Or... 
not quite. Um... That is it? It is? Really? Okay. What? No? It's not right? What? If we made it through the entirety of Professor Layton, we can figure this out. Well... It's not that it's like... Uh... Okay. There's one thing you're missing if I'm right. You're on the right track. Huh? Am I on the right track? No, Dark, I think we'll be fine. I just need to rotate it a bit more. All right, bye, Squid James. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Stay sharp. Tilt up a bit more, I think. Hmm. More up. Like this? Oh! Here? Okay. This has to be it. This has to be it. This has to be it. All right, bye, Chevy. Enjoy your Waffle House run. I hope you have a great, uh, have a great time and eat some good food. Stay sharp. Ah, oh, finally, there it is. Well, is this a miracle or what? Finally. <sighs> No one can possibly deny this jar's resemblance to the mission blue bag. Mission complete. Wait, why why was it mission failed? We did it. I'm thirsty. Thank you for the No, it can't be. Thank you for the hydrate. Order! Order! The defense has proven its claim. The mysterious blue badger witnessed on the day of the crime was actually this. Objection. Although we all enjoyed Mr. Wright's dramatic performance, one question remains. What's your point? What do you mean? So that badger thing was actually a jar. That doesn't change anything. Objection. Uh, yeah, it does. I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. You see, this changes everything. Indeed. Very well, then. Please tell us. What's different now that we know the witness saw this jar? The location. The location of the murder has changed. Allow me to take this these in turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jar. That's a very specific angle, I might add, Mr. Wright. Yes, well, knowing that this, where could she have seen this jar? Where? The location of the jar is shown in the picture taken on the day of the crime. It's on a shelf in the office of Damon Gant. But the body was found lying near Lana Sky's desk. The witness testified so herself. Objection. Yes, and it is these two facts that reveal what actually transpired. You see, the struggle between Dark and Marshall did not take place in Lana Sky's office. It happened on the other side of the room, in Chief Gant's office. Are you implying the murderer moved the victim's body? From Damon Gant's office to Lana Sky's office. Yes, that is exactly what we're implying. Yes. Why would he do that? There would be no reason. Exactly. If there wasn't a reason, he wouldn't have gone through the trouble. The only logical conclusion is that there was a reason. Do you know what the reason was, Mr. Wright? Hmm. I finally figured it out. So this is why Lana tried to stop the trial. It's too late to quit now, though. Please recall the witness's testimony. 
She said she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. In the next instant, the jar was hit and flew through the air. Now tell me, what could have sent the jar flying? That would have to have been the impact the man hit when it made when he was knocked into the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may draw your attention to this picture once more. Ah! You'll hear a metal pipe falling. <laughs> If the man was knocked in the direction of the shelf the jar was sitting on, what would he have hit? <laughs> the suit of armor, holding a very sharp and dangerous looking sword. Yes. And since the man who was knocked into the armor was carrying a broken knife, he would have had to have been Neil Marshall, wielding the King of Prosecutors trophy. No, Mr. Wright, you can't be thinking. Yes. There is another possibility of what actually transpired in that room. Another possibility? Of course, the perpetrator would have had no idea, but nevertheless... I... I don't know if I can go through with this. Cloud! Oh my gosh! Cloud926 underscore joins the guild. Cloud, thank you so much for that follow, and welcome to the Shades Layer Guild. Welcome, welcome! Mr. Wright, what's the matter? If, if events took place as the defense theorizes, then the outcome is obvious. In that moment, assuming the man Emma Sky knocked away was actually, the pro actually Prosecutor Neil Marshall. <gasps> oh! I forgot about that! Oh! Oh! You mean... Mr. Marshall died... because of me? No! Oh, and she's down. I never imagined her testimony would lead to this. So it was the witness who took the victim's life, and then proved so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented. What? What are you saying? I'm sorry, Miss Guy, but given the circumstances... Joe Dark murdered Prosecutor Marshall. How can you think it was Emma? How dare you try to pin the blame on her? Imagine that coming from you. Uh... If you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence two years ago. The reason you moved Prosecutor Marshall's body... <laughs> Metal pipes! Was to keep anyone else from finding out about what Emma did, was it? I reassure you, Mr. Medgeworth, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you hope to have anyone believe your insane allegations, I'm afraid you're going to have to have proof. Tell me, do you have any conclusive evidence that proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? E evidence? I'm willing to bet you don't. Yes. It certainly would be difficult to prove this with evidence. If we don't have evidence, then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. Oh, we certainly can't get dead people to testify. This has all been a wild goose chase from the beginning. Not quite. Hmm. Touché, Miss Sky. Of course, that only leaves us with one possibility. Oh, you mean there's still another possibility? What do you mean, Mr. Redford? I mean the possibility the victim has left us a message. For better or for worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind the name of the person who took his life. In one manner or another. That's... that's impossible! Well, Mr. Wright, this is the only possibility left for you. A message from the deceased. Does such a message exist? I've got to think back to the court record. The real murderer's name that the victim may have left behind. It's in the evidence! Thank you for the stretch! Ugh. This message from the deceased is already in our possession. Mr. Wright! 
Will you stop at nothing to prove my sister a murderer? We're not trying to prove Emma, Emma a murderer. We're trying to find the truth. We are trying to find the truth, Lana. That is the only goal here. Do not be mistaken, Miss Sky. Uh. Our purpose is not to accuse Emma of any crime. There is only one thing we seek. The truth. Mm-hmm. Exactly. No matter how painful it may be. Now then, Mr. Wright. Please show us the piece of evidence that conveys the message from the deceased. See that blood on the jar? Hmm, I wonder who that could be left by. This is the message left by the deceased. This is that blue badger from before, right? Oh, is he going to sp just speak the killer's name? If that thing could, I'm sure it would. Looks like everyone's forgotten this is just a jar. A message was left here, on the surface of this jar. What do you mean? If you look closely, you can see a faint trail of blood on this jar. It looks like someone wiped the blood away. <sighs> Yes, but notice, for some reason, the blood on some of the fragments was not wiped away. Yes, there is a line here, drawn in blood. So what you're saying is these dots were once lines. Prosecutor Marshall did not die instantly. He used the few precious moments left to leave him behind a message. One that someone apparently wiped away. But blood must have seeped into the jar where the lines changed directions. Precisely so. All we need to do is connect these points. Alright, bye Flaminica. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Stay sharp! And the victim's message will become apparent. And, uh, no! Lana? Mr. Wright, what kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor, I believe these bloodstains will reveal to us the answer. I've got to connect these dots to make letters. There's only one thing the victim would have written, given the circumstances. His murderer's name. Mm. Connect here. And then... Here we go. Connecting the lines. And that's it. It's a defense attorney's duty to prove their client's innocence. That's why all I've been thinking about is saving Lana. After all, my efforts... I never thought it would turn out like this. Emma. So this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. Oh no. The one thing Lana didn't want let out. Of all people, she may not have meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Skye. Seaworthy. Can't say I didn't warn you. Yeah, right, Gant. Chief Gant. Do you understand the implications of what you've done? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was convicted because of his final murder. I believe you were the prosecutor in that case, were you not? Oh, now you're just throwing Edgeworth under the bus. I do have to head out now since it's pretty late and I need to sleep now. Enjoy figuring out the rest of the mystery. All right, bye, Stara. Again, thank you so much for the raid earlier. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great sleep and a great rest of your night. Stay sharp. Ah. 
Yes, worthy. Because of you, an innocent man was sentenced to death. Not only that, but you used forged evidence to ensure his conviction. Not quite, Gant. But Joe Dark really was a serial murderer. That's undeniable. I'm afraid that's not important. Didn't you know we aren't defenders of justice? What are you talking about? Caprino, welcome in. What? We are merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter. Even if there wasn't any cover-up or evidence forgery, ultimately, the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. Oh. Despite what anyone may say, this fact cannot be denied. What's going on at the prosecutor's office? They might have sent an innocent man to his death! How can he just stand there like it wasn't his fault? Order! 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 The gavel's pounding fell on deaf ears. Unable to settle the crowd, the judge declared a recess. Where this trial is headed, no one knows. Oh boy. Professor, it's all gone cuckoo loco! Exactly! It's all gone cuckoo loco! It's all gone cuckoo loco now! <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh boy. All right. The final part of the trial is coming up soon, guys. All right. I'm going to take my break real quick, and we will be right back to continue this trial. All right. I will see you all in just a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. Ah! As a metal pipe falls on my head. BRB!
Well, I got some more water because uh, this trial is uh, is going to be long still. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is going to take some time and effort, but we can do this. We can do this. Thank you. Hello there. Manica, welcome in. Welcome, welcome. I am doing well. Thank you for asking. All right, hold on. Whoop, my model is doing a funky thing. Here we go. All right, let's continue then. On to the next step. Sorry, Edgeworth. I didn't mean to get you in trouble. <laughs> Don't worry about it. This is my problem, not yours. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Gumshoe. Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. Wait, Detective Gumshoe. What is it? You got a lot of nerve, pal, making a detective run around while on duty. And to top it all off, you call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. I take it Lana's having you run errands again. Let me tell you, this is the last time, pal. Here, she asked me to give you this if there was any break in today's trial. Evidence law? Ezrith was talking about that just the other day. You must know the two rules of evidence law. Oh, excuse me. No. Rule number one. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. I is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. You could at least study some evidence law, really. Well, at least Lana gave us something to study, I guess. The chief prosecutor also wanted me to give you a message. A message? She said, if you're planning to take him on, you're gonna need this book. Him. I guess I'll give it a, this book a good read. A thorough read. Alright. Doesn't look like that'll book that'll that book'll do you any good now though. All that's left now is the chief prosecutor's sentence. That's where you're wrong, detective. Huh? Haven't you figured it out yet? Why I'm still sitting in that prosecutor's seat? Despite all these allegations being thrown at me? Mr. Reginald. The real trial today hasn't begun yet. What? What else is there left to do? Your credibility has been all but ruined with this forged evidence you were unaware of. Emma Sky found out she unwittingly caused a man's death. And now you're telling me you want to do more? You gotta be kidding me, pal. You're missing the point, Detective. Lana didn't murder Detective Goodman. Uh, she merely stuck a knife into his dead body. That means the real killer is still out there. What? And we're going to expose him. No matter what it takes. This case has hurt too many people. It's time to bring it to an end. Indeed, it is time to bring this case to a close. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Laura Skye. Mr. Edward. Yes, Your Honor. The inquiry committee is planning to impose harsh penalties for your actions. Thank you for the news, Your Honor. Yes, well, ahem. Normally, this is where the prosecution calls forth a witness. But, uh, ahem. <clears throat> this isn't easy to say. You see, there is some concern that you, Mr. Edgeworth, may have, uh, struck a bargain. <clears throat> you think I may have manipulated the witnesses? I didn't say that. It's just, you see, everyone has been talking and, uh... Mr. Judge, you're supposed to be impartial. Very well, you. I have a solution. A solution? That being the case, the prosecution will allow the defense to call forth all further witnesses. What? But there's no precedent for what you're proposing. Undeniably, this is an unusual arrangement. 
but a very effective one. It would prove that I haven't struck any deals with the witnesses. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? Hmm. Unbelievable. Edgeworth has found a way to continue the trial. <sighs> very well. The defense accepts the prosecution's proposal. Oh boy! Then it's said the uh, defense may now call forth the next witness, Mr. Wright. <laughs> you do realize this is your last chance. If you call the wrong witness, this trial is as good as over. The defense calls. Time's finally come to bring out the real murderer. Mm-hmm. It's time, everybody. It is time to bring forth the man himself. The demon himself, Damon Gant. Finally, it is time. Damon Gant. The defense calls Damon Gant to the stand. D damon Gant? What does he have to do with anything? As the defendant's partner two years ago, Mr. Gant has first-hand knowledge of the crime. I feel we should hear what he has to say about it. Hmm. As luck would have it, he should still be in the courthouse. He would also be the least likely to have been manipulated by me in any way. Wouldn't you agree, Your Honor? True. All right. Bailey, please escort Mr. Gant to the stand. Oh, boy. Witness, please state your name and occupation. What is this? Some kind of practical joke? I was just on my way to lunch. Your name and occupation, sir. Worthy, are you sure you want to do this? Your name and occupation. Come on, make his life a little easier, Gant. Come on. So, you want to play hardball, eh? Oh, please, Mr. Gant. Fine. My name is Damon Gant. I'm the acting chief of police. Now then, Chief Gant. The court requests to hear your testimony. Oh, right -o. what's with the grim face? First, let's clear up this SL9 incident. Oh, you mean that time when Lana's sister murdered the prosecutor? Personally, I think it's been made pretty clear already. There are still some things unaccounted for. Oh, like what? Like the role you played in all of this. Uh-huh. Son, either you're very brave or very foolish. We're brave. We are brave. You are aware, of course, that a chief, po a police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Sure. Take my testimony, for example. I don't have to give it if I don't want to. What? Is that true? I'm afraid so. The chief of police has the right to refuse to testify. Of course, such an action carries with it certain risks. Don't worry, I'm not here to enter your trial. Just remember, if this turns out to be a big waste of time, don't say I didn't warn you. Oh boy. Very well. The witness may now begin his testimony. Oh boy. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. To make a long story short, we slipped up. That power outage didn't help either. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Apparently, she had already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. Hmm. Nothing to do with the forgery, huh? Now that's a little suspicious. Hmm. Is that when Doc was arrested? Him? He was lying on the floor unconscious. <laughs> oh. When Emma sent Neil flying, it seems Doc bumped his head. I see. Everything seems pretty clear cut. If the police chief has the right to refuse to testify, then I'd better hit him hard and fast. Of course he is sitting on a throne of lies. Of course he's sitting on a throne of lies. It's about... It's, it's, it's all he lives on. It's what he lives on. Hmm. You had nothing to do with the forgery, huh? 
Let's see about that. Because if we remember correctly from the picture, whose side of the room? Whose side of the room was the jar on? Gantz. So, naturally, this jar means that he had something to do with it. You claim you had nothing to do with the forger. But I'm afraid that is a claim you cannot back up. Explain yourself. Several pieces of evidence were found in your office. Take this jar, for example. That's the blue badger you showed us earlier. A piece of this jar was discovered in your safe. Not only that, but the evidence list I presented earlier was actually found inside your desk. It was found where? You see, Chief Gant, these articles of evidence uncovered in your office are both concrete proof that you also played a part in this illegal investigation. Mm. Chief Gant, what's the meaning of this? Oh, here's a defense attorney who may even rival Worthy. So you admit to it, then, that you were involved in the forgery? Who, me? Or do you mean you? Me? Why would I have anything to do with that? Well, you were the one who snuck into my office when you found this evidence. Ah, prosecutors aren't the only one capable of forging evidence, you know. Defense attorneys can do so too. Oh, for crying out loud, Gant! Stop accusing people! Isn't that right, Raito? However, Detective Gumshoe was present during the investigation. Worthy, my boy. Not even detectives are exempt from the law. Rest assured, Dick will receive his due punishment. No! Poor Gumshoe! Enjoy your break, Dark! What? If Detective Gumshoe's salary drops any further, he'll end up paying to work. <sighs> yes, well, in light of the detective's presence, please give us your testimony regarding these pieces of evidence found in your office and their relation to the forgery that took place at the crime scene. My, my. Kids these days no longer have to put two and two together. Hmm... Let's see, what was it now? A jar fragment and a list. For all you know, you could have planted them in my office. Anyway, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were found after Jock was convicted, then they were useless, then they're worthless. There's no reason I participate in forgery. Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. It wouldn't, huh? Hmm, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. When investigating the crime scene, you should have been more careful to observe protocol. You don't understand that I'm the chief of police, right? There will be consequences. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh. Indeed, I believe I will press charges so you won't make the same mistake again. My apologies, chief. But would you mind waiting until tomorrow for that? Today is, well, you know. All right, Uchi. In return, though. I know, I know. That place, right? Huh? What are these guys? What are these guys? Telepathic? No, that's Charlotte. That's Charlotte. Charlotte is the telepath here. Charlotte's the telepath, not, uh, not these two. Hmm. Wouldn't help you in any way, huh? Man looks like a snake. Yes, he is a snake. Really, Chief Gant. At the very least, there is very one, one very large benefit you reaped from all this. Oh, I wasn't aware. What is this benefit? That would be, of course, the position you have. Chief of Police. Oh! The resolution of the SL-9 incident secured your promotion to Chief. That in itself is sufficient motive. Oh, 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 that's a good one. Huh? Do you really think I'm that incompetent? What do you mean? Even without that case, I was already in line to become the next chief. The resolution of SL9 merely sped up the inevitable a little bit. Is that true, Edgeworth? Yes. 
He was going to made, be made chief anyway. Ah. Be careful when pointing that finger, or you might wind up the one being pointed at. So that means... <clears throat> there's only one possible motivation for you to commit forgery. If you didn't do it for yourself, then you did it for someone else. Good point, Edgeworth. That is a very good point. That would be a very good point. Don't be silly, Worthy. You know me better than that. There are only three I'm people thirsty. I look out for. Ah, thank you for the... Thank you for the hydrate. <sighs> there are only three people I could look out for. Me, myself, and I. There, it's out in the open now. Goodie, would you mind if I changed my testimony a little? By all means, please do. Hmm. Nothing in it for you. Sorry, but the only person I care about is yours truly. That girl. Lana's little sister, was it? If you think I felt sorry for her, you'd better think again. You're right. You don't feel sorry for anyone. Be tough on crime and tough on people. That's how I was raised. You seem to be lax enough on yourself, though. Ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho! Oh, that's a good one, Worthy. Hmm. Could there have been something in it for him? Given his selfishness, wouldn't it, would he have helped someone out? Ah, uh, this guy's a demon in disguise? Oh, heck yeah. Heck yeah. Well, I think we know who Gant's accomplice is. Fairly easily. True. You might not help any out anyone for their sake, but if it would benefit you, you might decide to assist someone. Hmm. Mr. Wright, it appears you're positively determined to portray the chief as a nice man who likes to lend people a hand. That's not what I meant. What the heck, your honor? Very well, then. Who is this person you believe Chief Gant may have helped forge evidence? His partner in crime, Lana Sky. Wish I could shove an apple in his mouth when he laughs. That's fair. Uh, practice, Dark. Also, I have watched the anime, so that has influenced my voices a little bit. Ch Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky, the, the defendant. Hmm. I believe it's quite obvious in light of the circumstances. Emma Skye fell victim to an unfortunate series of events. Who would want to help her more than her own sister, Lana? As for the Chief Gant, he would have had a reason to help Lana if she asked him to. That reason, of course, is self-profit. Self-profit? What do you mean? After the SL9 incident was resolved... <clears throat> Lana Skye was appointed chief prosecutor at the prosecutor's office. The person who arranged this job change was you, Chief Gant. But what? How would he profit from all this? He would be able to use the chief prosecutor as his puppet. Essentially, he would require unchecked authority over all investigations. Do you mean to tell me that despite the chief's formidable appearance, he plays with puppets? Your Honor. Oh, wait. You must mean Puppet is in someone forced to do his bidding. Never mind. Admit it, Chief. You assisted Lana Sky in forging evidence. Your motive? To appoint her as Chief Prosecutor so you could control her. Right, oh my boy. You have quite an imagination. Let me ask you something. What? Do you have any proof of this? That I controlled Lana? For example, is Lana testifying that I've done such a thing? Lana. She's keeping quiet to protect Emma. There's no way she'd testify against Gant. I'm afraid without any proof, this all amounts to nothing more than mere conjecture. Unless... That is also what happened in this incident. This incident? Uh, which one would that be? Of course I'm talking about... The murder of... Detective Bruce Goodman. The 
chief prosecutor has been acting strange throughout this entire trial. Almost as if someone has been controlling them. Worthy, you'd better watch your tongue. I wouldn't want you to get hurt. Just what do you mean? What he means, Your Honor, is that Chief Gant is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman. Not only that, but the Chief is now making Lana take the rap to cover up his involvement. What? 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 Oh boy. True colors come into light here. True colors come into light here. <laughs> Why would she? The entire point of being under one's thumb is to never Professor, announce it. It's all gone cuckoo loco! It's all gone cuckoo loco! Order! 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 I said order! Mr. Wright, you... you can't be serious. Huh? This... this is an affront to the highest ranking officer in our law enforcement agency. To accuse the chief of police of blackmail and murder? That is, is, Agent Dundasport. I will have right. order. Guild. Agent Hotman, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the Shade Slayer Guild. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> so many s sounds appearing at once. That's a, a, impossible. Mm. Uh, Your Honor, I was merely reiterating what Mr. Redgeworth said in an easier to understand language. It's too late, Mr. Wright. Huh? There's no turning back for us now. It looks like he's the one who decided to go through with this. Oh boy. Can you prove this, Mr. Wright? That the chief, a high-ranking officer of the law, is involved in this murder? Good question. Regardless of his rank or title, Chief Gant is just a man. The question is, is he a criminal? I believe the evidence will tell. I see. All right, then. Let's see what Mr. Wright's got. And it better be good. Show us the evidence that ties Chief Gant to the murder of Detective Goodman. How about the fact that his ID card was on the ID card record, huh? His ID being 777. This is the ID card, Chris. Yes, the one that shows who entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. There was one ID on the list we couldn't determine the owner of yesterday. 777-7777. Sorry, but there's no way you can prove that's my card number. It's your number. Uh, what? How do you know that? The safe in Chief Gant's office requires a code to open. A seven-digit code. Seven digits? You don't mean... I'm afraid so, Your Honor. The code was 777-7777. What's up, Dark? The same as the remaining ID card number on that list. Chief Gant, you entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. Ooh! Look at him break it down! Break it down! Ooh! Ha ha! Take that, Gant! Ooh! Order! Order! Chief Gant, what do you have to say? Nothing. The defense's search of my office was in violation of regulations. And I will demand Mr. Wright be punished to the maximum extent of the law. But right now, this court demands an explanation from you. About the use of this ID card. <laughs> Chief Gant, so you admit it. You enter the evidence room. On the day of the crime? What about it? I'm chief of police. Whether it's the evidence room or the bathroom. What's the difference? I can go anywhere I want. Tell me, when you enter the room, where are you alone? I always go to the bathroom alone, as I do with the evidence room. Detective Goodman wouldn't have happened to be with you that day, would he? Uh, of course not. Why would he be? I hadn't seen him in days. That's not true. You hadn't seen him in days. Chief Gant. I'm afraid you've just undone yourself. On that day, you had to have met with Detective Goodman. What do you mean? 
His trial's purpose is to determine Lana Sky's guilt. No, it isn't, Your Honor. His trial's purpose is to determine the truth. If Chief Gant met the victim on the day of the crime, then we need to determine one thing. What transpired during that meeting? In that case, Mr. Wright, I'm going to have to ask you for evidence. Show us proof that the victim went to meet Chief Gant on the day of the crime. That lost item report. That lost item report. If he had asked, if he had asked Gant to go into the evidence room with him, then he wouldn't. The reason why he wouldn't have needed to look for his ID. Ha 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 ha! Detective Goodman lost his ID card on the day of the crime. Or to be more accurately, Jake Marshall stole it. So Detective Goodman filed the lost item report. He would have had to give that report to the chief of police. Yet you are in possession of the report. Which means you can't be sure if he filled it, filed it. He filed it. How do I know, you ask? Because he needed to enter the evidence room that day. He needed to? Yes, to transfer the evidence out. Oh! Detective Goodman took, on, took the form to you, Chief Gant. Then, you accompanied the detective to the evidence room. I accompanied him. Ah? Uh -huh. There's no other way the murderer and Detective Goodman could have entered the room. Got him now. Hold on, let me guess what you're going to say next. I, the chief of police, murdered poor Goodman. Exactly. But, wait! The chief didn't necessarily need to accompany him to the evidence room. He could have just lent him his ID card. Yes. Now that you mention it, I believe I may have done something like that. Uh-huh. Sorry, but that's not possible. Hmm? According to the record, your card was only used once. Yet you showed us your ID card earlier. If you had really lent it to Detective Goodman, it would have been found on his body. No! Whoa! Whoa! Look at that! Look at that breakdown face! Woo! Woo! Chief Cat, you did it! <laughs> the murder was most likely a spur-of-the-moment crime, for no one in their right mind would choose the police department as a place to commit murder. After the murder, you contacted Lana at the prosecutor's office. Why? To dispose of Detective Goodman's body, of course. You're forgetting, Mr. White. That the victim's body was discovered in the prosecutor's office parking lot. How did he manage to move it there? I was at the police department the entire day, you know. And everyone's aware that Lana stayed at the prosecutor's office after the ceremony. Everyone except me, it seems. Still, you're the chief of police. You have an entire police force at your disposal. Oh, so you think I just ordered an officer to do it? Hey, you, take this here dead body over to the prosecutor's office. I don't think so. Chief Gant, you left all the evidence we needed to prove how you moved the body to the prosecutor's office. And all this time, I thought it was a useless clue just taking up space. Hmm... How could the chief have moved it? Well, if the body was found in Edward's car, there was a reason. How could the chief have moved the body? Mr. Wright, show us this evidence. To move the victim's body, Chief Gant used this. The screwdriver he gave to Edgeworth, causing Edgeworth to go back to the prosecutor's office with the body in his trunk. Ha ha ha! This is how he moved Detective Goodman's body. What's that? A screwdriver? But what does that have to do with this case? Mr. Edgeworth, think back to the day of the crime. What is this screwdriver doing here? It's here because... Uh, ah! He figured it out! I was asked to go by Chief Gant, no less. He told me he wanted me to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. Hmm. He set him up. After the ceremony ended that day, I didn't plan to return to the prosecutor's office. But you did, because Chief Gant asked you to. You mean I... I... 
You unknowingly carried a dead body in the back of your car. The body was found in the trunk of Miss Redworth's car. I think it's obvious what happened. The body was moved by that car. Da 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 da! Detective Goodman's body was carried in the trunk of Mr. Edward's car. Yes. Unless, of course, you have another explanation, Chief. Why else would you have asked Mr. Edward to transport evidence from a closed case? <sighs> There's only one plausible explanation. To transport the body to your accomplice, Miss Lana Skye. Mm -hmm. Order! 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 What's going on here? Is there no room for rebuttal in the defense's outrageous accusation? Think back to the photograph Miss Starr took at the prosecutor's office. This was not a photo of the body being stuffed in the trunk to be taken away. It was exactly the opposite. It is a photo of the body being taken from the trunk. Chief Gant! Please say something. I believe. Your time's up. My time's up! Sorry, Raito, but I'm having lunch with the District Attorney General after this. We've got to get going if we're going to make it in time for the early bird special. But, but the cross-examination isn't finished yet. Remember what I told you earlier. A police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons... Like the right to refuse to testify. I'm invoking that right now. What? That's not a right to carry casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. So you're going to just run away after all this? Run away? Don't make me laugh, Worthy. I stabbed old Goodman. That's what you're saying, right? But if you had any conclusive evidence, you would have presented it by now. Well, I... You think I had Lana dispose of the body? If so, then show your proof and get it over with. Hmm. I'll say it again, Mr. Wright. Damon Gant is the current chief of police. This court will not tolerate any accusations against him without concrete proof. Well, Mr. Wright, Your Honor, do you have any concrete proof? Proof that Chief Gant murdered Detective Goodman and made his sky, Miss Sky, dispose of his body. Do I have any concrete proof? Do we? We really don't. It. We really don't yet. Yet. Ever the being yet. It's no use showing evidence. I'm not even sure of myself. No, Your Honor. At present, I have no conclusive evidence. Hm. Seoji. In that case, this court is forced to penalize you for your allegations against the chief. What? Here's a tip. Never gamble over what you can't afford to lose, Raito. It seems that Lady Luck was on my side again today. Okay, Yoji, I'll leave the rest to you. Hmm. I warned you earlier, Mr. Wright. This is an affront to a senior officer in our nation's law enforcement agency. Lady Luck. Maybe we should have a word with her. Mr. Edward, what do you mean? There's one lady who knows the real truth behind this trial. We haven't yet had the honor of hearing her testimony. A lady who knows the truth. Another witness! In the absence of conclusive evidence, the only other method of proof is testimony. But Chief Gant has invoked his right to refuse to testify. There's still someone else. One more witness who can answer all the questions. Raised in this trial. Someone right in this very room. Mr. Edward, who is this person? Hm. Why are you asking me, Your Honor? Have you forgotten? The defense is the one calling the witnesses today. That's true. Mr. Wright, does such a witness exist? She may not be willing to tell the truth. But we can't just stop now. Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls forth Lana Sky! Edgeworth to the rescue! The defendant, Miss Lana Sky! She was in the underground parking lot at 5 15 p.m. on February 21st. Hold on, I need to drink more water. 
her task to dispose of the victim's body in accordance with a certain someone's orders. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, the prosecution has no objections, Your Honor. Very well. The court will now take its final recess for the day. In 15 minutes, we will reconvene to hear the defendant's testimony. This court is now in re- What? Huh? Chief Gat! I thought you were going to eat! Listen good, Lana. He's talking to Lana. I don't think you need me to tell you this, but if you accept Mr. Wright's claims, there will be terrible consequences. Oh, that's right. Your sister will be found guilty for Neil Marshall's murder. Ah! This isn't good! Of course, you'd never support such outrageous claims anyway, right? Just something to think about. All right, then. I've got a lunch date to meet. Lana, it's up to you. Make the right choice, Lana. Okay, if there aren't any further objections. This court is now in recess. Oh, boy. This is crazy. Looks like we managed to stay in the game. Yeah, thanks to your help, Edgeworth. That chief. He's something else, eh, pals? Detective Gumshoe? Ah, ah, ah. I'm not a detective anymore. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Ah, don't worry. I've already decided where to work now. At your office. My office. Sure. I'll take the place of that top knotted girl you used to work with. Would he mean... Maya? Mm. Still, looks like we're all out of moves now. Chief Gant's done it again. How is it he always gets the upper hand? It's not fair. He has the right to refuse to testify. <laughs> Settle down, Light. Remember what the judge said. But Chief, that is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. Exactly. Risks. What did he mean by that? It's simple. If the chief refuses to testify, the opposite also holds true. You mean he forfeits his right to s You mean he forfeits his right to say anything too? Emma, are you okay? Yeah. When I came to, I was in the medical office. I've been listening to the trial from the gallery. So she heard everything that's been going on. Um, Emma, I'm sorry for what I said before. No, don't be. It was the truth. You know, it's funny. I almost feel somehow relieved. Relieved? Yeah. Now I finally know what really happened. To think that all this time, my sister was being blackmailed by that terrible man. And she did it all just to protect me. Ever since her appointment as chief prosecutor, everyone who knew her said she had changed. Perhaps it was easier that way for her. What do you mean? What do you think I mean? To follow Chief Gant's orders, she must have shut herself up deep inside. To force herself to do anything and everything that Chief told her to. That must be why she became so cold. It was all my fault. It's all because I... I murdered Mr. Marshall. Hey, don't go blaming yourself now. If you want to blame anyone, blame society, pal. Chief Gant may be able to fool everyone else with his forgery, but he can't fool my memory. I remember now. I knocked Mr. Marshall into that armor. I... I see. Well, we better get back. It's time for the final act. Emma. Why don't you wait here? No, I'm going with you. Uh. I want to be there when Lana tells the truth. Let's go, right. It's time to end this. To be continued. Ah, we're so close. We are so close to ending it. Ah, so close and yet so far. So close. And yet, so far, we've still got a whole other part of the trial to finish. <sighs> All right.
Let's do this. Next week. Next week we can make it. Yes. Next week. My voice is literally running out of steam as well, so this is a <laughs> this is the perfect time to this is the perfect time to stop for this week. I am a uh, <laughs> My voice is going to die on me if I try to go any further. Uh, I was struggling to do the voices even for the last little bit. So um Yeah, put the blood on ice. The game just doesn't want to end. No. It doesn't want to. Well, too bad. It's going to have to. Ow, the cliffhanger. I know. The cliffhanger. How many cup water cups you had? I had to grab a second drink for this. Yeah, I've, I've been drinking water throughout the entire time, but still. <laughs> Ugh. Definitely gonna need a break after this, though. Ugh. Alrighty, though. I'm thirsty. Thank you for the hydrate. Ah, cliffhanger alert. <laughs> Alrighty, though. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. I really appreciate it. And next week, we will figure out the very end, and we will get make sure that Chief Gant gets his justice. Gets his just desserts. Don't leave just yet, though, everybody. We are going to find somebody to raid today. Let's see who we should raid. Who is available to raid today? Ah, oh, Zwari is live. Worry is black playing Super Mario RPG. That's awesome. Let's go ahead and give our good friend Zwerry a raid today. Zwerry is playing Super Mario RPG. Let's go, uh... Let's go give him some support and some, uh... Some, uh, encouragement from the gallery. Alright. If you're heading over to the raid... To raid Zwerry with me... Please sh be sure to type Shadeslay Raid in the chat so that he knows that we are here to support him. If you're also heading over, be sure to follow all of his rules as you would mind. And once again, have fun, first and foremost. Next week will be the end of Ace Attorney. Will be the end of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Alrighty, though. Thank you so much for coming, everybody. And I will see you all, not tomorrow, because I don't stream tomorrow. I will see you all on Thursday, Thursday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will be starting Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box, the next entry into the Professor Layton series. I look forward to seeing you all then, and I shall see you all on Thursday. Bye! Stay sharp, Shadeslayers! <laughs>